Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a ground splash from scratch. I've covered surface tension and small scale fluids quite a bit in the past, um, but I still think this is a useful practical example. It's been requested by one of my long term patrons, Jack Tinokoro. Uh, he's pretty good with uh, flip fluids himself, likes to do some really cool small scale setups. And what I'll do in this tutorial is set up a crown splash from scratch and after that I'll have a quick look at the shelf tool version so you can see the differences and the similarities and how both setups try and achieve the same thing and hopefully that will give you a better understanding and make it easier to get the look you want from your shots. Okay I've started up a clean Houdini session and I've browsed to the parting fluids tab and to get us started I'm going to create a flip tank and this is just going to be our starting point. 5 by 5 is a good size for testing. I'm not going to be worried about real world scale and going microscopic with the sizes. When you get to these sort of small scale sizes, you're never going to work at physically accurate scales anyway, because it's just going to be too small in HD units. And in real life, it's usually something we see through slow-mo cam cameras and not something we look at every day. There's a certain amount of trickery we can get away with. For our splash, I want to create a fairly shallow tank. So I'm going to pull this up. Maybe give us a little bit more height. Something like that. And the reason for the shallow tank is so that we can create a big splash, but not have as much of a recoil and a secondary splash afterwards. And it's a little bit less fluid, so it might be a bit faster to swim as well. And you can play with the depth of the tank to get different looks. Okay, next up we're going to need an emitter as well. And I'm just going to rearrange this stuff a bit. I'm not going to worry about it fluid interior at the moment, so we can get rid of that. That's our initial flip tank. And then I'm going to get a sphere. And this is going to be our droplet. So I can reduce its size. Maybe a little bit smaller, something like that. And with the size of this droplet, the it's definitely going to hit the splash, it's definitely going to hit the sides of the tank. But for testing, we can keep the tank small and then enlarge it once we're happy with the results. So I'm just dropping out a transform so I can move this up a bit. Maybe around there so we give ourselves a little bit of headroom. And we can convert the sphere to polygons couple of subdivisions and I'm just going to use the shelf tool again to create an emitter from it and it wants me to select the flip tank I can do that and just hit enter and it's actually created a second flip salt for us which is not what we wanted but we just leave these Keep the emitter. That was a surprise. I didn't expect it to do that. Now this is airing out because it's probably referencing something in the other one. Or maybe it just needs to recook. No, it is complaining about something. Ah, and it's an error in the sphere. All these references are now broken. Just need to relink these. I think I'll probably just pause the video and fix these. Okay, that was a bit painful, but all the links are fixed now. Okay, and, and on the emitter, while we're here, I'm going to turn off cell thickness because I just wanted to emit from the sphere. I don't want it to be bigger than that. The rest is fine, we can leave it 
like this. And then I need to do some cleanup work here as well. It's created more nodes, which we don't want. So I can delete that and I can delete that in here. Call this droplet. And we put our initial flat tank and our droplet. And we can hide that one. And I'll dive into the Autodub network. Okay. Now I'm going to remove the merge because I'm not going to need that. Then on the flip tank, I think we can probably get away with a bit more resolution to start with. Let's set this 0.5. Then I'm going to set the grid scale lower to 1.5 instead of 2. So that just means we have a few more voxels compared to particles. And that's good for surface tension. You'll see it's the recommended amount as well. Because you want some higher resolution voxels to work out the curvature, because that's what surface tension is, is based on. It's a volume-based force. So it's calculating the curvature of the surface volume to apply the force. But this is a practical example, so I'm not going to get too technical. On our objects, these are set up. There's nothing else I want to change there. I'm using narrowband at the moment. I can probably simplify it and turn it off, but I'll, I'll leave it on for now. On the flip solver, I'm going to change it to the swirly kernel. Uh, this is generally better for small scale fluids because it's uh, it just solves the velocity transfer a bit more accurately and you get a smoother, smoother fluid. I'll leave everything in the solver. Bounds are linked uh, to the to the sub level one. And I'm going to leave everything for as else for a default now. I'm not going to turn on surface tension yet. The first thing I don't want to do is just make a splash. So on the source, I only want to source for one frame. So I'll say if $FF equals to, equals to one. Actually, let's make it $SF. Or if we decide to change our the start of our simulation. And I'm just going to hit play to see if this works. And you can see we get a droplet dropping down and splashing into our liquid. And we can see the splash isn't very big. But it's definitely working, so that's good. So I'm going to go back up. And in my initial, I'm going to make it even thinner, the layer of liquid. And then for my droplet, I'm going to give it some initial velocity. And I'm going to make the initial velocity fairly strong, like minus 12. So it's shooting down faster than gravity. So that we get a nice big impact, so we can get a nice splash. Then I'll jump over to the Autodump network. On the particles, I just want to set this offset scale to zero because I don't want to interpolate the um, from the velocities because it's not like I'm emitting a stream. I just want to get that droplet out and I want to shoot it out fast. Uh, let's hit play and see what we get now. Okay, we get a lot bigger splash now. You'll notice as well, the recoil is actually hitting the top. And it's splashing down pretty fast. It's simulating fairly quickly. So I'm just going to lower the resolution a little bit more to squeeze out a few more particles. And then I want the splash to be even a little bit bigger. So I'll get for minus 14. So all I'm trying to do is 
make a big splash as quickly as I can and to get a general size I like before adding surface tension. So this is looking okay. Another thing worth testing is you'll notice if we, if I just double my sub steps, that drops coming down really quickly. So it's not resolving the splash that well. You can see as soon as I do that, I get a bigger splash. So the reason that's happening is that impact is just being solved a lot more accurately. Okay, I'm going to stop that after a couple of frames, see what that looks like. That's a nice big splash. Now it's time to turn on some surface tension. So I'll set the sub steps back and maybe we can make it one and two for now. I'll go over to the volume motion tab, go to surface tension turn that on and we can start with a low value something like two and then if we go to the particle motion tab i want to change some of the reseeding settings because it's surface based i want to oversample a bit so i'm gonna oversample the surface by two and i'll up that bandwidth to 1.5 what that means is our reseeding is just going to source a higher amount of particles per voxel around the surface of the object, giving us a more accurate surface, which in turn is going to give us more accurate surface tension results. So let's simulate this and see what happens. Just going to create a camera as well, so we have some sort of a consistent view as well. Then realize that could be useful for us to compare with if we need to. Maybe something like that. Uh, now let's see what happens. Yeah, you can see we're not getting much of a result. I'm gonna use my timeline for now. It's looking pretty similar to before we had the surface tension. And that's because everything's happening really quickly. If we try and bump up the surface tension force, you will see it's going to start breaking. Um, it might, might have a good result initially. So I'm going to sum that and let's see what happens at 10. But once this gets too strong, we might need a way to slow the sum down and that's either going to be through sub steps or reducing all our forces okay we can see it's doing something but not really what we want so let's see what happens if i keep this value fairly strong i might want to boost that downward force even a little bit more Go up to 16. And then in my flip solver, I'm going to set the slot to time scale to 0 0.1. That's going to have the effect of everything moving 10 times slower. What that means is we will need more frames to simulate all of this. So now if I hit play to cook the simulation, you can see the droplets falling down a lot slower. But if we look at, say, the velocity, you can see the velocity is still really high because it's still showing us the real-time velocity. So it's a similar sort of a idea as setting the gravity to 0 0.98 instead of 9.8. And you can see now 
hitting the side a bit quickly. So maybe I've gone a bit big on the splash. But as this is developing slower, we're starting to see a rim forming and we're seeing some more of the, the telltale like, crown splashy type shapes forming in there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll lower that back down. Go back to 14 where we were. Go to our initial tank and make it a bit bigger. So eight by eight, so we have some more space in there for this to develop. And I'm gonna keep that surface tension at 10. Maybe give us even a little bit more resolution. It's running fairly quick on my machine and it's still, it's not even a million particles. Let's, let's be crazy and make it 2.5 and let's cook this and see what result we get. Okay, the simulations run for just over 50 frames now. You can see that now it's starting to really work and we're getting some nice big droplets forming and it's starting to look like a crown splash. So I'm just gonna to go to the end here and we can see we are running out of tank space again. So if, if this is too much surface tension for you, then at this point you can reduce the amount of surface tension. If you want the effect of surface tension to be stronger, then increase the surface tension amount you'll get bigger droplets and you'll get the surface sticking together more. So it could affect the size of your splash a little as well, depending on how extremely you go. But yeah, this is, we already have a working setup and this hasn't even cooked for 10 minutes yet. Okay, but I'm gonna stop this one here. Let's tweak the settings. One more time. So what I'm going to do is just for fun, we can double our surface tension and let the sub steps to one and two, which is, which is okay. Um, I can reduce the, the uh, time scale more but I'm going to increase my sub steps a little just to make sure that it's accurate. I'll make it two and four. I'm trying to keep it as low as possible, but also get some nice surface tension. And I just doubled the surface tension, but I don't want to reduce the time scale even more, but I'm trying to get some nice results. Okay. I think that that should do it. And I'm going to cash this out. Let's just set that up. Get my custom file cache. Right, let's try to the mesh now. So I can move that out of the way. And I'll just call this Crownsum. And I'll set it to read from disk and I can run out 240 frames. And before I forget, I'm just gonna make the tank a bit bigger again. Make it 12 by 12. And then I'll run out 240 frames and I can write that out in the background. So I'm just gonna save the file and then hit save to disk and background. And while that's going, we can have a quick look at what you get from the shelf tool. Okay, I've opened up another instance of Houdini. And I'm just gonna go to particle fluids and create crown splash from the shelf tool and hit enter. And let's see what we get. So again, you'll see that tank made pretty shallow. 
and we can ignore this. That's our emitter. That's our initial tank. Got a second dock here, which shouldn't be there. This looks like a bug. Let's get rid of that. We can hide that. In our emitter. So in this one, we've got a force of minus four in the velocity. And if we go to branch splash them, you'll see our emitter is coming in. It's only setting for the first frame. But what's being done differently on this one is the time scale is left at one, but the velocity of gravity is being set down to 0 0.01. So essentially side effects is doing the same thing. They're actually reducing the time scale by a hundred. So if you multiply that by a hundred, you will get normal gravity. Like that. And then because they're slowing everything down by a hundred, this is where they're making it slow motion. And we go over and you can see also had added, added a bit of oversampling to reseeding. And on the surface tension itself, it's got a lower value than mine. But then we also have to remember all the other forces are lower as well. So I'm only slowing things down by a 10. This is going all the way to a hundred. And it's reducing all the forces instead of reducing time scale. But essentially it's the same goal. It's having the fluid move slowly and everything develop slowly to give the surface tension a chance to evolve and give you those nice droplet shapes. A force like surface tension tends to need a lot of subsets or a lot of time to, to evolve. It's kind of the same thing with SPH based um, liquids as well in that case you tend to just have a lot of sub steps and if you want to speed this up afterwards there's always stuff like time ramps with the retime node and you can check out one of my other tutorials i've got a tutorial about retiming flip using the retime okay once we've got some frames to look at i'll jump back over to my ground splash and we can see what that looks like Okay, so that simulation has now finished, and in the end I actually ended up running four of them. Uh, the first one didn't finish all the way through, but I figured let me make four different versions so that we have a few different ones and we can compare settings. So this is the one I showed before with surface tension of 20 and the downforce of 16 with the new sub steps. And you can see it's pretty strong. Uh, but we can, even at this resolution, which we can probably push a little bit higher for something final, we can, we can see that there's some really nice shapes happening. Um, but because of the strong surface tension, it's sticking together quite a lot. So I made a second version. And for the second version, I reduced the surface tension to 12 and everything else stayed the same. And it took just under 24 minutes to finish. And let's play this one. You can see with less surface tension, we get a bigger splash. Um, but if we give it time to develop, we still get some tendrils coming off and some droppers forming in our crown. And this one's a pretty nice one as well. And let's jump to version three. So for version three, I decided to increase the surface tension again, but make the downforce a bit stronger. So I increased that to minus 18. So it hits the surface a little bit harder, but the surface tension keeps it, the fluid together a bit more. And that, that was a bit slower. It took 26 minutes. And that's what this one looks like. And you can see we get an even bigger splash because of because of the more aggressive force. But we get some more 
uh, droplets detaching and our simulation actually gets a bit too big for our tank. We probably need to increase the size of our tank if we want to use this one. But it's, it's looking pretty cool, I think. Next up, we've got a last one where I bumped up the surface tension even more, but I reduced the downforce again to just 16. So just, just subtly nudging values around, seeing what different results I get. So yeah, we can see with this one. So this is close to the, the first one settings. It's just a bit less surface tension. And we start getting droplets detaching. This one, like this one and the first one probably look the most macro. Oh, obviously all of them are, but if you kind of imagine what scale this would be. Uh, my favorite is probably the third one, even though we need more space for it. Uh, let's go to number four, since we've got a whole splash of a drop coming off there. And let's see, so that's frame 330, oh sorry, 230. Uh, I'm not really going to cover meshing in this one, I'll, I'll just show some quick rough mesh settings that we can have a look at but i think it might be better to make a separate video about meshing fluids a bit later on but yeah as you can see from this like once you've got some got a setup to control your splash you can start playing with different values so and the values you can play with is strength of the surface tension how hard the droplet hits the fluid surface and then you can also adjust your subsets which is going to affect the look a little bit of the surface tension and also the other thing you can do is decrease or increase the size of the drop hitting the water that's the one thing we didn't test but if we look at this one we like if the droplet's a little bit smaller we'll get a smaller splash as well so you can do that instead of increasing the size of the tank. That covers everything for the surface tension. We are on version four, which is our last one. I'll go to frame three or two thirty. We have some nice shapes, and I was just using the surface tension. I I've got surface tension on my brain now. Uh, I was just using the particle fluid surface to visualize. I'll turn off the velocity visualization and set those to polygons. I might already have some settings turned on. I'm just going to give that a little bit of time to cook. Okay. So there you can see we can get a fairly decent mesh. What I've done, I've reduced the voxel size just a little bit and gone for some fairly basic settings. Turn the dilate and road on to keep some of the detail. And got a mean smooth in between the two. So I flipped these around. That's just because the mean smooth after was just a bit too aggressive. And then I've got this curvature co flow smooth, which is one pass of it. Like the mesh is not perfect, but it's not too bad. And we get the fluid building up on the edge like we want. Got some nice droplet coming off. And if we want more stuff coming off, we just hit the fluid harder. And because the tank is very flat, we do get a hole at the bottom. So depending on your camera angle, this might be a problem. The two solutions for that would be a deeper tank. And what you can do as well is add some extra VDB at the bottom to try and fill that hole to try and cheat it that way. But and as soon as you drop the angle to somewhere like this, it's not really a problem. Okay, so that's it for creating Crown Splash from scratch. I hope this walkthrough makes your life easier next time you're creating a splash. This hopefully gives you a better understanding of what settings to change and how to change them to get your desired look. Thanks for watching. Bye.
If you want to see more videos like this, or if you just want to support me, go check out my Patreon page or follow me on Vimeo or YouTube. And if you like this video, give it a like. And as always to all my patrons, thank you very much for your continued support. I can't do this about you guys.